so sweaty. I hope I don't die make filming this. That would be cool if I died filming this though. I could be like people who have died doing what they loved. Hey guys, I'm Johnny Nerdout. <laughs> I build custom e-bikes and we got another custom e-bike for you here. This one's an awesome e-bike. Want to go over what I did to it and why this thing is awesome and why you should seriously consider converting the bike that you got. And if you've already done that, you should convert another bike that you have and have a backup. So this is a specialized stump jumper. This is probably, I don't know, three or four years old. They're 28 by 2.0 tires and they're road oriented. So these things, it's a really smooth ride when you're riding this on the street and it, this front suspension here takes care of all those like bumps and road imperfections. So this is a really good commuter. I would, I would slate this as a really good commuter bike right now. I would put a rear rack on this, except this one doesn't have rear rack tabs. So for this one, you'd have to put a universal seat post mounted one here that would come out here and then you could put you know small bag on here or some panniers something like that for the motor we went with the bbs02 motor it puts out 750 watts nominal peaks at about 1500 watts for a battery we went with 52 volt 17 and a half amp hour battery um, these are made by em3 ev they got panasonic ga cells in them in my humble opinion this is the cream of the crop as far as battery goes for display, we went with the 500C color display. I really like this display. It's a small integrated display, which means that the buttons are integrated into the display. It's only got four buttons. It's all right here. It's a really small, super sleek. Doesn't take up any clutter on the handlebars. It's got a throttle right next to it. So if you don't want to pedal, just hit the throttle. And no, the pedals do not keep spinning when you hit the throttle. There's a freewheeling crank in here. So you could just do this. Look at this. You could do that. We also added a gear shift sensor onto it. This is a mid drive that just acts like an automatic clutch. I'm sure you guys are getting sick of me talking about gear shift sensors, but I strongly recommend you put one of these on, especially in the case of this bike, because this bike has these Magura MTS hydraulic disc brakes, which they look like, I want to say like spider legs or something. It's a super unusual design that they use for this. And it really sucks for me because it's near impossible to mount hydraulic disc brake cutoffs on these things. They outsmarted themselves, Magura. Stop doing that. So because this bike doesn't have hydraulic disc brake cutoffs on them, the only thing to do to cut power is this gear shift sensor. You know, ideally, you always want to have brake cutoffs on here. I like to have them on there. You know, now it's kind of more just like a dirt bike where it's just treat it like a throttle, shift gears, and then hit the throttle again. But I really like this bike. This is a super solid bike. Specialized does not make garbage bikes. Let's go do a Johnny Nerd Out test and uh, see how this thing performs on hill climbing tests. I do from a standstill and with a running start. It's about a 30% grade. And then I also test top speed on a flat incline, which is, these are just with the throttle. So if you add pedal to it, you're gonna be doing a lot faster. No, a hub motorbike cannot do the performance that this is doing. I don't care what it is. You have to be doing at least 5,000 watts to even come close, but it still won't even be able to do the hill climbing. If you think you could beat me on that with a hub motor, message me. I wanna do like a, a comparison. Anyways, let's go do a giant nerd out test. Okay, so total on this build was 1600 bucks. Um, mainly some of the added features we had to do, we put a new chain on it, and I had also had to use a PF30 to BSA adapter on this because this had a PF30 bottom bracket, which means the shell was like 41 millimeters in inner diameter, and BSA is like 34. So we had like seven millimeters of just wiggle room. So you gotta fill that with something. And so we put the spacers on there, so all in all, this bike was 1600 bucks. Obviously minus the cost of the bike. He already had the bike, so this wasn't an additional cost. You cannot buy a pre-made e-bike for 1600 bucks that will compete with this thing. That'll do 37 miles an hour and climb hills like this thing. And you can see this thing hit 37 miles an hour on that Johnny Nerd Out test and climbed a 30% or so grade with 
from a standstill with no problem. So if you do the math, if you're a numbers person, crunch the numbers, especially if you already have a bike that you, you know, somewhat like, this is the cheapest way to go. Dollar for dollar, watt for watt, you cannot beat the performance that you're gonna get for doing a conversion yourself. And if you're gonna do it yourself, you're gonna save even more money. This was 1600 bucks with me doing it. Without it, it would have been under 1300 bucks, like 1250. Hopefully you guys found this helpful, enjoyable. See you later.